And it's a championship edition of Hoops Adjacent on the Athletic NBA Show. David Aldrich here in D.C. My man, MT, got back to the Bay, got back to the town. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> the Denver airport, which is always a hassle, was yeah. cranky. Was it? I, I, yeah, it was It was extra wild. I, was, <laughs> I ended up running. Like, it was like free like and Simpson, the <laughs> at the same time. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> it, it is hard it, it, and look it's hard to run through dia man because you, the, the trains will you, you gotta get to that that's a thing that's right. gonna stop you but then once you get to the terminal yeah it's once i got there i was looking it. it was wild <laughs> i was like man all these people made it to the airport <laughs> like, a lot of drunk driving happening right <laughs> on, on on the other hand you halfway to oakland anyone once you get out to dia you halfway to oakland so. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Oh. <laughs> Hey, it's not that far. What was your flight like? Twenty-seven minutes. You know what I'm saying? Thirty-seven minutes. <laughs> oh, just just catching strays. <laughs> I, I I do think it's a little. I mean, it ain't as bad as people say. No, it, no, it's, it's far, far, but it ain't like it's far. It's yeah. far, but I mean, it's like once you get there, it's like O'Hare. It's like all the other really busy ones. You just it's gotta pretty. Down. So it's a pretty drive. That's what yeah. makes it like. Yeah. Yeah, that's what makes it unique. It, it's not bad, and and you know what? For me, so when you are on that drive to DIA. Um, Pena Boulevard kind of snakes its way to DIA. On the left side of Pena Boulevard is Montbello, and that's where I grew up. And so where um, it, it used to be we were the farthest thing in, in Denver, and then they built DIA. Which that was, was the end of Denver? Hey, is that Denver? where like the uh, it's like a hotel and a bunch of like restaurants and stuff is over there? I used to yeah. stay at that A-loft over there all the time. That was my yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah. So when I grew up, none of that stuff was even there. It was just houses. And then uh, when DIA came into existence, all the hotels and all the restaurants started popping up. And so now it is what it is. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. We used to always bristle. Oh, we're not far. We're not far away, but we're kind of far away. And so DIA the last was- time Denver yeah. won a pro basketball championship, none of that was there. That was, none of that was there. there. Okay, gotcha. It was all gone. Yeah, the, the the airport was in literally the middle of the city. The airport was ten. The airport was on Seventeenth Street or Nineteenth Street or something. Yeah, Marcus, yes, it was it like was. it was like ten minutes from downtown. It, was, it, was it really was fantastic. And and and, 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 and T, you legit could run through that one because like, right, you, right, could, right. you could just walk in the door and right. run straight to the gate. <laughs> Man, that was, McCarran, I, used to I can't McCarran. even imagine it now. Airport being there, like it just, no, it's it a wild crazy. thought. It was crazy. By the way, this is Chris Dempsey, our guest this week from Altitude, covers the Nuggets. So we needed somebody that's been that somebody who smelled like Moet. Somebody that's been drinking for several hours. (laughs) Somebody who had goggles on. That's That's me. (laughs) Man, now I know what it's like. I know what it's like. And well, see, Marcus, you have the same experience as, as Chris did. I know what it's like to go into a locker room with a championship team. And it's, you know, when it's, although I did, I did have a slightly similar experience when I did the nationals in 19 at the world series, but when it's your own, when it's your hometown spot, yeah, it's just a different feel, a different flavor when it's, when it's the team you cover on a regular basis. And I, when I, in 19, it was like, it was wild. Like I was thinking, this is literally, I'm not kidding. This is the first time. I've ever covered a team that actually won a championship. <laughs> it was it was like mind blowing. So I wonder what that was like for you last night, Chris. Hey, hey no. First yeah. off, Chris, we're not gonna let him get away with this sob story. Like it's just been rough for him. He covered Michael Jordan. <laughs> like we're not we're, we're not gonna pull out the violin. But, I, but Michael, I didn't. Co- but but I wasn't Michael. I wasn't the local guy. I, mean, I don't care. He was in the building. I, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't trained, Lacey Banks I up a in this Warriors <laughs> titles to cover Michael Jordan. I'm not even listening to your sob story. My back, CD. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 so funny yeah you know what um it's interesting uh because to uh da's point so um prior to me being at altitude i was at the denver post for 14 years um and then at the boulder daily camera for seven years before that so it's been a, a, a long haul in in sports media for me and i did cover the denver broncos uh their second super bowl title so in 1998 when they went back to back i was okay. a writer for that and it is a different experience um, going from writing about it to 
being a, a part of a of a station that is owned by the team and um, being able to kind of experience that from the inside. And uh, so last night was it was a lot of fun. I mean, there just there's no doubt about that. I mean, I took a picture with the trophy. Um, there were there was an event in the arena um, well into the middle of the night um, for for employees and staffers from Cronky Sports um, Enterprises. And uh, it, it just was, uh, you know, I'll, I'll never forget it. You know, I, I just will never forget. Well, if I'd have had one more drink, I might have forgotten the whole thing. <laughs> but but, but uh, I didn't. And so I won't forget it. And so it's just, um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, it was it was a really fun night let's just put it that way and 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 to to be able to have traveled with this basketball team and to um, get to know everybody in the organization and um, you know to kind of feel some of that with them now the players and obviously the coaches do the heavy lifting they're the ones who won the title uh, but to be in some ways connected to that was was really cool you know I wanted to ask you this because uh last night was the first time it felt like a finals was happening right and i felt like yeah. i was in the wrong spots and you know maybe i did spend a little bit too much time in cherry creek but i was like yo pulling up to the arena right like there's there was a sense you of, were at forget me not yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like uh, i was waiting I, I just feel you know i've seen like you know, like when the abs won, you see the videos, like it looks lit. Like what? Yeah. So what was that like? What was it like for the Nuggets? Did it just take a minute? Because like after they won, it was like, oh, okay, here it is, right? Here's mm -hmm. that feeling. Mm -hmm. What What do you think it is? I understand it's a football town, it's a hockey town, but it's a generational talent. Like it's a team that won. It's like a, a novelty experience. Did it just take a minute to catch or – like, what do you think explains the, uh, the I guess, the increasing fervor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here's the evolution of being a Nuggets fan. <laughs> um, it is uh, it is a heartbreaking experience for over time. I'm 48 years old and um, born and raised here. And so for the entirety of my life, which is basically the entirety of their NBA existence, um, they have... I mean, they've they've had a lot of good teams here in Denver, um, but for one reason or another, they were just not able to even a get to the NBA Finals, much less um, get, you know get the job done if they were to get there. And um, so, I, I think what what happens over time with the fandom, especially with the Nuggets in this city, I mean, there's a hashtag um, around the hashtag Nug Life, and and that is just like just when you think things might be okay. Listen. They're not okay. <laughs> Did you say, <laughs> yeah. Nug Life? Like, nug Life. life. Said nug, nug Life, life. MC. Yeah. <laughs> exactly I right. I read a Nug that's... Life, baby. I'm <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's facts. Oh and so, God. you know, it's um, you, you had a great many people who grew up here and were fans of the team and just, um, just a lot of heartbreak. So um, I, I think what this year has done and over the course of this year, uh, about halfway through the season, I think fans, even the ones who decided to kind of put their Nuggets fandom away a little bit, halfway through the season, when this team got to first place and then were never out of first place, that brought a lot of people back to the table. And a lot of Nuggets fans who um, just kind of guarded their hearts, uh, they let them, they let their emotions kind of flow again. And that's why I think you saw um, the kind of the fever pitch for this basketball team rise over the course of time, over, over the course of the season, because um, there was a point at which Nuggets fans allowed themselves to believe again, to allow themselves to hope again, and to look at a basketball team and say, you know what, maybe this team won't break our hearts here. Maybe this team is the real deal. And uh, it has these stars who seem to be amazing stars and the, the kind of players that can lift you to the highest heights. And um, so uh, for Nuggets fans, uh, look, on my radio show today, uh, we just took a bunch of calls and it was people who were crying and it was people who relayed stories of, of their, their dads or their moms or their grandpas or grandma, like, they, like those kinds of stories. 
when you have a team to win this for the first time, and it reminded me exactly when the Broncos won it for the first time. Um, and you had just families who had been um, for generations, you know, fans of this team, and they had finally seen them reach to the uh, – seen this team – that evokes and so that's what today is that's what this whole week is going to be uh, for quite quite frankly and and I'm, I'm so happy for the Nuggets that they get to live this year because uh, you guys are right the Broncos have done this a million times now um, the Avalanche have done this a million times and now it's the Nuggets turn it seems to me like this Denver seems a lot like DC in that sense like it's clearly the football team is number one Whoever wins mm -hmm. next is number two. <laughs> and then down mm -hmm. at the bottom is the, is the NBA team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I, I did wonder, like, like to Marcus's point, I was there for games one and two, and I was like, where, where's the signage? Where is the, you know, like you go downtown and most years, the, the team in the finals, you see go nuggets in the windows or something or some placards or City something. halls lit up, you up know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. where's Where's the signage yeah. at? <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, we yeah, left we're... the building last night, though. What, man, what's I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I was at the Renaissance for the hospitality suite, and my yeah. hotel was in Cherry Creek. Yeah. $15 lift ride. It was $75. What? <laughs> <Yes>. oh. Damn. <laughs> but but they like, got the dude, you. <laughs> the dude was telling me, he was like, yo. And I, it was like at 1 o'clock in the morning because you had to wait. Because yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. It was so lit, you just couldn't get anywhere. You, you couldn't get so, anywhere, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why I was like, oh, okay, now. I understand, yeah, I understand that. Because that's you're probably going to get three rides the whole night just because it's impossible to get, Facts, get yeah. anywhere, right? So, but I, yeah, I man. didn't leave the arena. I didn't leave the arena till twelve thirty, and there there were streets blocked everywhere. And yeah, um, right, yeah. yeah it was uh, you know, it, <laughs> I people didn't know how to act. Like the Nuggets just won for the first time, and they were just out there just doing whatever they do. And it was it was it, 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 it was crazy. Um, Did you but, see the lady you know ride what? roller skating down the street with a topless <laughs> lady and a, and a rollerblades, bro? Just skating. The shit's going that was happening. <laughs> Aaron Gordon was out there, no shirt on, still with the basketball oh, shorts he, on. He was doing his JR. Doing everything. <laughs> yeah, he was doing, he his, was doing his JR. <laughs> or, or he was. So I mean, we, we yeah, we we nobody knew what to do. It's like, it's like you look around and you're like, what, what what am I supposed to do? This team won, and we never thought they were going to win. So how are we supposed to react? And, and that's such a great point. Like you way. described it perfectly because that's literally what it was like. It wasn't like. <laughs> An organized sort of thing. It was like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna take my shirt Chaos. off. I'm gonna smoke some weed. I'm gonna walk down the middle of the street. The show driver was like, yo, I'm just gonna I'm let y'all out here. We had to walk the rest of the way. Like, it wasn't like, yo, it was like, we don't know what to do. So let's just turn up. Right. Oh, it's facts. It's facts. All the weed here too, right? Yeah. All the weed. Yeah, that's right. Legal weed. You know? Oh, they were <laughs> all the weed. All right. All right. All right. Oh. I'm saying, like the governor probably blazing too. Like, all right, wait, man. they were blowing. It was wild. <laughs> oh man! There was a there was there there was one street that they um the the outgoing mayor uh, mayor uh, Hancock he out in front of the um, civic center building they they named the street Nuggets Way kind of temporary te temporarily so that was a thing um, but you're right there's not a lot of signage um, but but there was this and and I remember. Um, the guy I have a nugget shirt on right now, but I, I was walking about a week ago uh, just into a, a grocery store and I had a nugget shirt on and it was the actual first time, like every single person that I made contact with was uh, said, go nuggets, go nuggets, go nuggets. And, you know, for that to be the thing and, and um, here is amazing. I have a seven year old son. I was, I took him to his soccer practice uh, just last Tuesday and Kids were wearing nuggets, just nugget stuff. And I have never seen that ever around here. And so, you know, people right. really leaned into this basketball team. And so, yes, there wasn't a lot of signage, but there was a lot of chatter. That a lot of people who never talked about basketball were suddenly basketball experts. And, you know, and, and um, but it was great. You know, it's I, I basketball is a sport that I love the most. And so to see that here in Denver get its flowers was I, 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 you know, I, I, you couldn't wipe the smile off my face. So uh, I, there was a lot of that happening here in the city. Yeah. So I need you to dissect this for me. And uh, 
like I, I want it to be put in a proper context and nobody better than you since you've been there. Uh, there's this photo of Nikola Jokic when he's five years old and he's got on like a Nuggets. Oh, he's got sweater. the tennis racket in his hand. I know. Yeah, tennis yeah. racket. Yeah. And, and the, the first thing I think was like, that's who the Nuggets were, right? They were the place where the, the leftover shirts get sent across. Right, the they get sent to <laughs> like, Serbia. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> you, just, you ship them out, right? Nobody bought them. Let's just give them away, right? But after the game, one of the things that stood out was the uh, – I, I don't want to say indifference because he plays in a way that's just the opposite of indifference, right? But yeah. it's like his, his humility kicks in overdrive and – we didn't get like that moment. We, you know, we kind of, I mean, we got it because like, to me, it was like when his brother picks him up and his brother is like, so moved. Yeah. We didn't get the mm-hmm. Jokic anything is possible. And he's like, I don't want to go to the parade. I want to go home. Right, Tell me right. about this relationship between this, like clearly generational star and outside from our world where, you know, the NBA stars kind of relish this role and they want the moment. It feels like yeah. maybe Denver, more than anybody, understands this part of Jokic not wanting it and kind of like him for it. And where we're kind of waiting for, hey, man, can you kind of like, like, let's go, man, participate. Like the, the final seconds are ticking off and we're watching Jokic and we're waiting for him to do something. And he literally walks over to Mitch and started shaking heads like it was the AAU game. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, he's just not going to do this. Like, he's not going to do it. But it, explain that. Like, it seemed like Denver fans like kind of love that about him. And that's the appeal. But for us who doesn't know that, like put that relationship in context, this guy who kind of shuns the superstardom and somehow y'all yeah. love him more for it. Yeah. You know what? Um, so in 26 years of covering athletes of all sports, um, you hear all the time, uh, you know, it's about team. I'm here. I'm, I'm here for, for the team. It's not about me. And sometimes they're right about that. And sometimes they're just faking it for the interview. Um, when Nikola Jokic says that, it's he is the one player that I have ever covered in the hundreds of players that I have covered across so many sports uh, to literally live that every single day. It is not an act with him. He is His tight-knit circle is his family, his brothers, his wife, and his kid. And Serbia, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, right, and, right. And, and so anything that's not one of those things is just – it's it's not it, it doesn't matter much to him he's not on social media um he doesn't have commercials he's not he does not seek the limelight in any way shape or form and guys i have to tell you that when you don't you know he basketball is his job it's not who he is um as a person and let me just tell you when you don't eat sleep drink a sport um it, it's hard for you always get this point in which a player will um, slack off. Maybe I'm not getting in the cold tub today. Maybe I'm not. I'm not going to do this workout today um, because it's not the most meaningful part of my life. And what's most impressive to me is be- it's not the most meaningful part of his life. But to your point, he treats it like that every single day. And his competitive nature and competitive spirit is on par with any competitor that you have seen play this sport in the history of the league. He does not walk on the court to lose. That is, that is a fact. And he plays that way all the time, but at the end of the game, he keeps it 100 with himself. And that is, I am doing this for my family and it is not about me. And I am going to walk off in, into the in, into the sunset and uh, I joke about uh, with people around here about this all the time the minute that he retires we'll never see him again I, I mean I, I just it, it's that's who he is he just wants to fade fade into the background and yeah. <laughs> um uh, uh, but but he is um and in that respect in here in this city uh we love him for that um he is it is not a fake um it's not an act and it's humble in the realest, most organic way. And I think that's why we love him so much. And then on, on top of all of that, he is a truly great player. And we watch him do this every single night. And for him, I was so happy for him and for this basketball team, but they were able to display that for the country because we scream it to them for the, the, you know, to the mountaintops here. 
and we feel like nobody is hearing us. And now he was able to put that on a stage where everybody has to look back and go, okay, I get why they're saying this now. I get why he's this great. And you see him roll these stats up in the face of defenses that are tailored to stop him. Um, you have the series full of the smartest coaches in the world who uh, devise plans to at least make him inefficient and nobody can do it. And it's, um, it, it's um, uh, we love it here. We love his demeanor. And, and, and that's why he is so revered here in Denver. I believe this is, I may write this <clears throat> later this week. If I have time, I may not have time, but MT, I believe he is Tim Duncan. This guy is Tim Duncan. This is mm -hmm. the exact same thing that Tim Duncan did. Tim Duncan did not leave any visible footprint in the world <laughs> except <laughs> in two places, you know, in well, three places. Number one, Virgin Islands, where he's from. Number two, mm -hmm. the arenas he played in. And number three, the auto body shop that he loved to go to <laughs> in San Antonio. Yeah. That was his spot. <clears throat> he mm -hmm. went there. The only time, Marcus, the only time this guy ever got excited ever when I interviewed him, ever when I interviewed him, wasn't that very, and he didn't do many interviews either, was when I asked him, what, if you could get one car out of any car in history, what car would you get? What car would you want to have and drive around? And he said, a 1949 lead sled. <laughs> And I had no idea what that was. I had to look I was it up. About to say that. I have no <laughs> it idea just came it like that's like that's what yeah, got him excited. I'm like, they had cars in '49. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this dude now, but, but Tim's thing was different. And this is what I wanted to ask you, Chris. I think Tim was grounded by a couple of things. Number one, he lost his mom real early. He lost his mom when he was like 14, something like that. And that, believe me, yeah. I'd say this from experience, that shit, you never recover from that shit. Yeah, <laughs> ever, yeah, yeah. ever recover from that yeah. shit. And it just kind of yeah. sobers you to everything. Like nothing is as important after that. And I just wonder, and 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 the fact that Jokic is from Serbia, and I know what yeah. Serbia's had to go through the last 20 years, I'm That'd sure right. he's like, yo, man, I mean, we may lose this game, but it's not the same as these bombs going off five feet from where we grew up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm guessing... <laughs> He exactly has a sobriety right. based in so, in something along those lines. Yeah, you you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, you, you, when you talk about um, where he's from and what that country has been through, and those people, you know, continue to endure. Um, it is um, he has this in complete and total perspective, you know, and um, you know, it's I, I always always also laugh too because when. Um, uh, you know, there was a there was a point in time where people thought, well, he, he's just a big soft guy, and I'm like, soft is the last word you need to use for Nikola Jokic because like, like soft those is in kind like, or something. yeah, like, like <laughs> as gentle yeah, as like, a child, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, I, 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 you're right. I think his um, his upbringing, uh, where that was, is um, the, the plays the biggest part into you know the man that he is today and. Um, also, you know, to Tim Duncan's cars are, uh, Nikola Jokic's horses, you know, I mean, they, they, they uh, each have go. this Absolutely. thing that right. they, right. they, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you know, that they love and that's, that's where he'll be. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I said, we'll never find him again, but if you went to go, if you went to uh, any harness racing <laughs> track in Serbia, you'll yeah, that's exactly where you'll find him. And so it's, um, you know, harness they, racing, my goodness. Yeah. I, yeah I, it's it's i know it's crazy it's crazy um it, you know it, it's there was a, a trip uh i think this is last season actually uh when we were in new york and um somebody in new york invited him out oh and it was i'm sorry it was uh it was in new jersey uh invited him out and he took the invitation and and then a bunch of pictures people took a bunch of pictures with him and i mean he he truly loves that um, but yeah, these things, these things that are not in the spotlight, but they, that matter to them, um, are, 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 you know, that that's the space in which they live. It's funny. I, I had a conversation with George Carl one time, um, in, in regards to Tim Duncan, uh, as it related to Nikola Jokic and, and, you know, basically what he said was, you know, Tim Duncan was like the, I can't remember the phrase he said was, um, the, the, it's kind of like, um. You, you, the superstar that you didn't have to you, you didn't have to manage him 
you know, he, like he managed himself. Um, he was always, uh, he, he wasn't a knucklehead. And, right. and Jokic right. was, Jokic Yoc- is that Jokic is that guy. And so in that respect, those two guys, I think are exactly the same. Today's show is brought to you by Front Door. Download the Front Door app and get a free video chat. We all have that long, incredibly nagging home to-do list that we keep putting off. It's full of annoying stuff that just needs to be fixed. A dripping dishwasher, hole in the drywall, or maybe your dryer is not actually drying your clothes. Well, wouldn't it feel great to get all that done? Well, now you can, and it's easier than ever. Introducing Front Door, the all-new one-stop home repair and maintenance app. Front Door lets you video chat with experts in real time so you can diagnose the problem faster. Sometimes you can fix it yourself on the video chat or Front Door will send you a list of vetted and trusted pros to come out and help solve the problem. With a Front Door membership, it's easy to cross things off your home to-do list and enjoy that feeling of done. Download the app now and get a free video chat with an expert to start solving your problems today. There's just there's just no disputing the excellence of Jokic anymore, right? But this team became a championship team when they got Jamal Murray back, right? And like you, you just got it. You gotta have mm-hmm. that other guy. Uh, and he gave us the moment. He gave us our moment that we had an immediate need to, you know, that we love to kind of grab onto. Yeah. He gets he gets very emotional when he's talking about it. He missed essentially two postseasons because of his injury. Mm-hmm. Uh where do you rank as far as like the what the ceiling is for Jamal Murray? Because he's been incredible, uh, but it still feels like there's some areas to grow right there it feels it feels like there's like there's places for him to go and he's gonna need to because now i I know this is new for denver but now steph curry Giannis and and right lebron jay they're they're coming for denver coming now it's like okay we have a new mark so what do you see for him yeah Yeah, what do you see for him like next because he was so good but you know it still feels like there's more he can do so when I did the film study of Jamal Murray coming out of Kentucky, um, I my analysis at the time was uh, I thought that this he could be a twenty point scorer in the NBA. Um, so uh, you know a very a very good player in, in the NBA. What I had no idea was um, the this chip that he has, this switch that he has that when the games are the most pressurized, the brightest spotlight, the most, the highest stakes. He raises his level to, uh, you know, he, he gets to the next level. And, and um, you know, look, in the Western Conference Finals, he averaged 32 and a half points per game. You know, if, if there's not a guy named Nikola Jokic on, his bas- on this basketball team, he's the MVP there, you know. And so, um, you know, playoff Murray is a real thing. Uh, I, I think for Jamal Murray, he started to rise to a little bit of stardom in the bubble. He was going back and forth with uh, Donovan Mitchell with 50 point games. And then the Nuggets came back from the two, three, one deficits uh, to beat those two teams before ultimately falling to the Lakers in the Western Conference finals. But Jamal Murray, for what he put on the court, and then obviously, uh, the, the, you know, he had uh, Breonna Taylor uh, uh, on, on his shoes and um it was very emotional during a, a, a you know a, a very important time um in this country to be honest with you uh and and then the following season he got hurt and and the, the nuggets didn't do anything you know they they didn't have him they didn't have mpj um you know they were the sixth seed last year uh playing against the golden state warriors they like they got swept by the phoenix suns the the season before um in the playoffs and you know, he kind of became a little bit of an afterthought again. Like, who is this guy again? Oh, yeah, Jamal Murray. Oh, yeah, I remember him from the bubble. Like, he had a couple of good games in the bubble, but, like, you know, he, he's all right. And, right. Felt like a fluke. you know, yeah. you get into these playoffs, <laughs> and then he – right, right, you know. and But now he had a chance to remind everybody just exactly who he was. And he did that. And so for I, – I think for Jamal Murray, this was huge. And I think what he does subsequently to now is going to be even bigger because he's got all stars ahead of him, I believe. And um, he's got, there's a lot more accolades in his future. 
And, uh, you know, what he, one thing he did speak about on the podium yesterday was um, the, the first game of this, this season, which was his first game in like 19 months against the Utah Jazz. He rolled out there and he didn't play great at all. You know, he, he was tentative and all the things, you know, he just wasn't himself. To get to, from that space to where he was by the end of the finals is night and day. And what this offseason is going to allow him to do is rest, get his knee back right, and then really hit next season running. He wasn't able to hit this season running. It was his first season back after ACL surgery. So um, he'll be able to hit next season running. I think that's going to be a big deal for him. So he'll be able to build on the foundation that he established this year. And I think for him, um, that's going to equal a, a lot of, um, just just uh, high level basketball uh, that will be universally accepted and 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 viewed um, here in the future. I, I, the one two punch. I mean, it is it is devastating. Like, yeah, Mark, it's all right, huh? It's all right, huh? It's all right. You wrote this, you wrote a good piece today about about how Jokic is kind of bringing the big man back, and I and I really hope that's true. <laughs> I hope that's true for a lot of different reasons, um, because I just you know. To see someone play like they're seven feet tall and 260 pounds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like not, not run away from it. No, I'm big. Listen, I'm a big dude. I, I felt like I was old because, listen, this dude could pass. He could right. shoot. He be bringing a ball up sometimes. <laughs> when the game was on the line, it's Let me get in that paint. <laughs> where did he go? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not playing yeah. with y'all. Yeah. Little kids yeah. got to see me Come on. Come here, Bam. Come here and get some of this, Bam. <laughs> I'm I'll come and get some of this. so much, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? And, 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 like, it was Bam, come give some of this. In the previous series, it's Anthony Davis, come get some of this. And it just is, um, you know, he's the uh, – uh, it's interesting that you say that. Obviously, he's the first um, center to win um, um, finals MVP since Shaq did that in 2002. So it's been a long time since a big man has uh, really impacted uh, the uh, finals, especially in in that way. Um, but what I think that about Nikola Jokic is he, he's kind of he's a hybrid uh, because you're right. I mean, look, the, when you look at um, the synergy stats in terms of percentage of possessions that are post ups. The Denver Nuggets are usually it's like the it's like the Nuggets in the Philadelphia 76ers, right? Because you have Embiid and you have Nikola Jokic. And those two, even though it's a it's a small number comparatively in history, it's still they are the the, the biggest percentage post-up teams in the NBA. And so what you have are these guys, these big men who can operate in in that space. But in Nikola Jokic, he can also operate as a flat out point guard. And when you see these pick and rolls and when they do this two-man dance, and sometimes it's Jamal Murray handling the ball, and sometimes it's inverted and, and, and you have Nikola Jokic handling the ball, it is – that is the future of the NBA. And then when it's games on the line, oh, or it's 10-2 run, you need to get momentum back, get in that post, give me the ball, put a hand up, and then I will deal here on the block. It is old-school basketball. And, and I think I will be very interested to see how he impacts how the center position is played um, in the future because we, we see it with Bam, and, and Bam is such a great example because when he got into the league, I, I think the Miami Heat, um, there was a little piece of what they were doing offensively that was very similar to what the Nuggets were doing. And so you have a center who's operating at the elbows all the way out to the three-point line. And it's triple handoffs and it's, and it's pitchbacks and then it's getting downhill, um, you know, in pick and roll. And, and, and is your center able to be a facilitator, a playmaker? Can you run offense through this person? Because if you can, you unlock a whole new world of what your offense can be. Um, and, and, and so for the Nuggets, uh, you know, uh, Nikola Jokic embodies that. And he also embodies that old school toughness, that old school. I'm just going to back you down and, and we'll see what happens. We'll just see who, who's bigger and tougher. And so um, I love that about his game, that it marries both. And I wonder how, you know, that will impact the position going forward in the future. That to me is why it's like if you're figuring out, all right, how do we beat the Nuggets? That's the quandary. I mean, you can't get more perfect small ball centers than Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo. And the problem mm -hmm. with Jokic, Jokic is like ordinarily, 
you put a smaller play. If he's out on a wing and he's whipping it, you put somebody smaller who can deal with yeah, him all that. Right. But if you do that, <laughs> he's gonna be like, I'm back, I'm gonna back in there. So you need somebody who mm-hmm. do both. We watched it. We watched it. And these other series, you put somebody too big on him. Like Bam was able to play against like the Brooke Lopez's and the yeah. Robert Williams because like, all right, I'm gonna pull you out, and now you have a weakness. But like you mm-hmm. can't like yoga makes you do both at the same time. Right. Like you yeah, gotta be right. big enough to hang with him, but you also gotta be able to get out there on the perimeter and deal with him passing it. So now you gotta start looking for these bigs who like, I mean, because the Warriors have this problem, right? It's like you got Draymond. Draymond is perfect, but he's too small. Like he's, he's little. small. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's yeah. like he's six five, like right. and right. tough as nails. And he'll bang with him. But like when they played the Warriors last year in the first round, they had to have Kevon Looney on the court. It's like yeah. you can't go out right. here small. Right. But then now you got two guys who compromise your offense because they can't score. Yep. That's, yep. And that's yep. the problem look yep. Jokic gives yep. you. Like you can't sacrifice offense to guard him. Yeah. Right. And you can't just go ahead and like, all right, I'm gonna put somebody out here who's gonna get buckets. Like, no, because that dude's usually small. He's gonna beat that dude down. Yeah. We watch Anthony Davis and Bam out of bio walk away like, whoo. I'm <laughs> tired. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, so- and, and you know what? So, so much of what we see in the NBA with the bigs, if the bigs are specialists, so either you're a big yes. guy yep. and you can, you know, and you're kind of screener roller, or you're a small ball guy and you are a little bit of a, uh, of a facilitator. It's like Kevin Love and, or Robert Williams, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So, what do you want to be today? And you know, when you're playing against the Nuggets, the issue is is that your specialist center is at some point is not going to be able to guard something that Nikola Jokic is doing. And so now you need to have multiple specialist centers, <laughs> you know, you know, and, 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 right. and how do you do that? Are, are you going to have um, a big guy? How many scouts are Nikola like Jokic landing in Serbia right, right now, scouting yeah. for the next? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and I mean, I mean, that's, and, and honestly, guys, I mean, it, it really is one, one of the things that makes them uh, one of the great offensive weapons in this league is that you, uh, because what you don't have on your team is a player that's comparable to that. And like Bam and Anthony Davis are maybe the most, maybe cat, you know, as, as well, like you, uh, these guys who can kind of do, like they can do whatever you need to on the court. And in most situations, they're not overmatched defensively either. Uh, so, um, you know, but with Nikola Jokic, it's just, it's just that you, uh, you have to have a guy who's big enough to hold him off. You have to have that same player has to be uh, nimble enough to be out on the perimeter to, kind of play in ball screen action and play in space a little bit and um, maybe, uh, you know, kind of stunt and recover on some cutting action that the Nuggets are do- is, doing ar- uh, is doing around him. Uh, but there's not one guy who do it though, who does no. all those things. Right, right. Nobody and if you, know, you happen to do it kind of well, right, and you commit to it, you be like, I got you, then Murray's right. killing you. <laughs> right, exactly, right. exactly. Right. And that's what makes it, you know, and that's what really put Miami in a conundrum is, you know, my it is I, I I understand how they were built, and I I actually really love the small ball experiment. My, Miami and I know San Antonio experimented with this uh, as well. Now they're going to get Victor Wembanyama, and that's going to be a different thing. Uh, but I, if you're able to do small ball the right way, uh, that can work, and. Um, Golden State showed you a little bit of that, but even in their early years, they had Andrew Bogut out there, right? Like set screens and do all those. Like, what the Nuggets are, are I, I think, will show the NBA is like you still need a big body. Like, I mean, it's it's cool to do everything else and 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 the space on the court and on the driving lanes and and everything that that uh, that offensive basketball is now. Uh, that's great, um, but at the end of the day. Um, you still need a big body and you probably need two, you know, just to make sure that you have everything, uh, all your bases. And you could and, and, and you can win a championship with it. To me, that's the difference. It's like, yeah, like, all right, Joel Embiid is good, but like nobody had won at all yeah. with it, right? Until now, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, this is official, like a referee whistle, right? Now it's like, <laughs> all right, 
this yeah. is done. You got to deal yeah. with this. And I right. think now that's going to make people say, all right, now we got to do something. Because uh, up until now, it's been teams that play small. Right, right. Well, you got to shoot threes like the Warriors can shoot Yeah, threes. basically, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, Miami did that for one half of one game, and that was the game they won, right? <laughs> like, they shot lights <laughs> yeah. out from three. Yeah, they did. And Denver's defense was terrible, and they won that game. But you got to do that three more times, and it's hard to do in the finals. You know, like, yeah. it's just hard to do against a good it's, team. It's hard to do. You know, and and it really is. Uh, it's one of the things I love about basketball. This is what I love about basketball. So y- you can win an NBA title uh, with Patrick. Uh, well, not Patrick Ewing didn't win that <laughs> that time. Uh, but you can Ow, win an NBA so title. Random with stray a, uh, from Patty. He ain't even uh, doing no, nothing. Chris. I, I, like, <laughs> I know. I know. I was, no, I'm in his own stray. business. I was gonna say. I was. I was gonna say. <laughs> I know. I, I. It's my bad. Um. I. My point is, you can win an NBA title with. Um, a center who is rooted on the block. And then you can win NBA titles. Uh, I, I remember hearing, um, I can't remember who it was, but when Golden State was on the rise, it was like, oh, but jump shooters, come on. A little small Charles guard, Barkley. jump shooting. Like, Charles Barkley, yeah, okay, Charles Barkley. Jump yeah. Shooting team. Yeah. You, you can't win with a jump shooting team. Oh, but you win with a jump shooting team. And then it's like, okay, but now there's no big men in the, in the league. And you're like, like, you can't win that stuff. Of course you can, because basketball is jazz. And jazz, uh, all jazz is, is, you know, you have a template and then you just ad lib off of that. Yeah. And there are a million ways to win in this sport. And I love it for that. And what the Denver Nuggets have just shown you is that, oh, yeah, you can still have a big, but the big will be required to do some different things than bigs have done in the past. But this is still yes, a path that's so critical. to win yep. a title. So yeah. critical. All right. Let me let me get you out on this. Um, <laughs> I love Michael Malone. I really do. Number one, his dad was one of the first people who really helped me learn the game, like really did when he was in Detroit, like taught me a lot about basketball. And it was and I'm very much in his debt for that. Um, But I just like Michael. He just seems like a solid, good dude that, that is grounded in the right things. I loved what he said last night. But I was wondering, like, ah, are you sure you want to go out on that limb right now, Slick? Man, he can't have his Pat Riley moment. You know what I'm saying? He can't have his Pat Riley moment. <laughs> hey, wait, see, he, he, it was like 2.2 seconds before. He's like, we want more. We right, right. I'm like, I, uh, you can go that route if you want to now. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because Michael Malone is um, – you know he's uh, he's as uh, straightforward uh, and as and as honest as they come, and like he's like he's legit never satisfied. And for, you, know, you couldn't even take five minutes to be like hold up the trophy at first, and then, then before we talking about it, you wanting more, <laughs> but but he his appetite for winning is insatiable, and so it's um. You know, he's he, – look, I, I think this team is built to be able to do it more more than just one time. Uh, but certainly, you know, you, you, like, you, you, you say, it's cool, man. It's cool. Sit back and relax. You, you did it. You did it. You know, a lot of people here didn't think you could do it. Obviously, Sacramento didn't think you could do it. They, they, they fired him immediately there. And, um, you know, so for him, I, I think this was his moment in the sun as well because, you know, there was some skepticism here uh, as to whether he was – um, the, the coach that could get this, uh, get his team to the mountaintop, right, and right. what he proved is he is that dude, and and so um, I'm 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 extremely happy for him against and, Eric Spolstra and, and too, by the, the way. Organization. <laughs> against Spolstra, yes, exactly, right. of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. yeah. Question. I, I want I want to ask you one more question before you go. Uh, to me, one of the one of the great stories is. My guy from the Bay Area. Ah, uh, Oakland Soldiers, baby. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what just what do you think of like where, where does where does Aaron Gordon fit into like you know, obviously every time you win a championship, there's a lot of stories, but I mean here's a guy who was mostly known for emptiness and hype, right? Like winning a dunk contest and being in a jump high for empty stats, but, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, but yep. but he yep. came and he kind of Re- reconstructed himself to win, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, obviously there are some great Nuggets figures in history, right? One of my favorites of all time watching coming up was Fat Lever because I loved his name and he was such a baller, right? Yeah. But like, yeah. where do you think Aaron Gordon fits now in, in just the storyline of the Nuggets history? 
So Aaron Gordon's story is amazing. And I'll take you all the way back to when they traded for him. So when they traded for him, um, he arrived at the team and um, it, it, the Nuggets immediately had a different look about them. Um, they had a more legit look about them as a basketball team. And when he arrived, they shortly went to uh, the LA Clippers and, you know, Paul George and Kawhi and all those guys. And they went there and they beat them there. And it was eye opening for everybody, certainly here. And then I think nationally too, if you were dialed in on that, the Clippers were really obviously well regarded at that point as a, as a legit contender. And the Nuggets just kind of roll in and they beat them. And it was, it was like, wow, you know, you get this guy, Aaron Gordon. And the first thing I did, one of the first interviews with him when he got here and, and I said, you know, you know, what do you suppose your role is going to be here? Like, what have they said to you? What do you want to do? You know? And the first, the only thing he said to me is like, I just want to fit in. I, I just want to fit in. And okay. So he said that, and then he lived it. And um, defensively, um, he has been incredible. So what happened after they beat the Clippers in that game was that a week later, Jamal Murray tore his ACL. And they were never able to get to um, the playoffs with that configuration. And, and they thought that they were legit contenders. And so it took another two postseasons before they were able to get to that. And when, when, when the playoffs opened this year, I, I said this on my radio show. I, I said, you know what? I, I said to the fans, I said, you know what, this has been two postseasons in the making. We have waited for this configuration to be on the court to see what it can actually do in the playoffs. And what it did was win an NBA title. And Aaron Gordon, all he did was guard Carl Anthony Towns, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Jimmy Butler. This is your life. <laughs> you know, um, and he right, did that right. to um, – a pretty a pretty high level of success even if those players had a high point total their efficiency was super low or they didn't have a high point total and um Aaron Gordon's presence on this basketball team was essential and when you got to a situation where you were playing against a basketball team that was smaller than you then quarter one of game one he scores 12 points in the first quarter because they can't handle him because he's too big. And then when they needed him most in that, in that game four in Miami, 27 points, you know, it's, right. he, he is a guy that he has never demanded the basketball. He sits in that dunker spot basically is what he does <laughs> and, 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 and kind of operates, you know, short, short, short corner to short corner. And he does that it, 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 with a with a physical nature. Um, I have great respect for what Aaron Gordon did. It is not easy to play physically like that all the time, and 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 continue to be that effective over the course of a season. Um, he t short answer is this: um, I take calls and texts all the time, and people love this man. They love him for what he has done. They love him for being humble. They love him for just being a team player. And then they love him for showing up when it's time for him to show up. And so where he will stand, um, certainly in Nuggets history, is on a very high pedestal. Um, and he has earned that. And he, he, look, he flat out earned the right to run around Denver, the streets of Denver with no shirt on <laughs> last night. Um, uh, because he has, uh, he has done the job and, and he has done it with uh, a lot of professionalism. All right, Chris Dempsey says, everybody in Denver, take your shirts off. You heard him. <clears throat> you heard him. I heard him say that. I you heard him say that. I mean, I, I mean. Don't, don't run away from it now. Maybe, you said it. Maybe not, maybe not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said, fit people, take your shirts off. Fit people, yeah. yes, take your shirts off. And there's lots of fit people <laughs> oh, in Denver because so, they so, run in the mountains. Oh, so this, this, this would be my time to just... <laughs> <laughs> To disrobe, yeah. Right, that's, the, that's right. the only fans version of the podcast. That'll be later on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Dempsey, man, go Absolutely. celebrate. Go get your drink on for the next several weeks as you enjoy yeah. this championship. In, oh, now, hey, be careful because you're at altitude now. <laughs> you're the, you're... Enjoy it. Y'all gonna be hated now. It's coming. The oh, hate it's is coming. coming. They're gonna hate you. They're gonna hate you. They, 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 they hate is real. Arrogant. It's, you know, it's coming. Right. You are. It's coming. <laughs> Win another one. We'll take it.
We'll just take it. Man, I appreciate y'all. Just tell Cronky, Cronky not to give an interview to the New York Times where he says you're light years ahead of everybody else. Don't do that. <laughs> or no, do it. Lean in. Just go ahead and lean in. <laughs> tell Cronky to get on the mic and be like, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> um, no comment. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> All right, y'all, leave that five-star review on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get this fine American podcast. Marcus, my man, now that you're back in the Bay, back home, if they can't leave them five stars, what do they need to do? Keep it to yourself, you haters, or we're going to make you take your shirt off and get high at Denver for the next week. Exactly.